guys so today i'm going to show you how to solve partial differential equations using the finite volume method um, the partial differential equation we will use is this um, we have here the conductivity times the gradient of the potential of the voltage um, and here we have current density so the first step in doing so is discretizing the equation so we rewrote what we had before. We're actually going to use the equation in 2D. So instead of using volumes, we're gonna use surfaces. surfaces. Um, so instead of uh, having a current density that is volumetric, we're gonna use surface um, current density. And we're going to take a surface integral on both sides on the entire surface that we are going to work on, which here is omega. Let's assume that this is the whole area we're working on in the problem. Now we're going to use Gauss's theorem in 2D, even though usually it is in 3D. Uh, we're going to move from an area integral into a line integral that goes over the entire circumference of the square of the area. And here specifically we have a square. So basically, this is a vector field multiplied by the infinitesimal uh, length here, length vector. So what we need to imagine is that we are going along the this, basically this route here. We are going to only take the perpendicular component of the vector field that we have here. This is where we can see it here. It's written in a more comprehensible way. Um, we take a scalar product of the vector field and a um, normal or a perpendicular vector, uh, unit vector, to, it, to each point along this line. So basically this is what we have. We're only going to, to look at the lines that are perpendicular. Um, now, since we are working in a square, we can take this integral and make it into a summation. We're going to sum the this product, basically, of this times the length of the side here, delta L. We're going to do this for each one of the four sides of the square. On the other side, we assume that current density is constant, so we don't actually have to take an integral. We can just do a simple multiplication of the current density times the area. Delta S is the entire area of omega. Now, our second step is creating a mesh. We actually want to take the formula that we made and use it for for little squares basically along the entire area that we have. It's our decision how fine or big we want to make the mesh depending on how good of a resolution or a resolution we want to have. Um, granted that the more fine the mesh will be, the higher the resolution, the longer it will take or the harder it will be to actually calculate the end solution. So what we're going to get at the end is basically what is the potential in each one of these squares. That is basically what we're looking for as we solve the problem. So let's think that this is the mesh we created. Um, we just want to take a look at dimensions here, see that we're understanding how it works. So this is one cell taken out of the entire area. The indices of it are i, j. The entire area is dimensions are h height and w width for one cell the we have delta x and delta y and to solve to get them um, we basically have to divide the width and the height by x capital x and capital y which are the amount of cells that we have in each axis so we basically divided x by four in here so it will be w over four and h over four as well so that's it now in order to actually get the x coordinate um 
because you know this can be from 0 to 10, from 50 to 200, whatever it may be. This is the formula that we're going to use to actually get it. This is going to give us basically the middle of each square. Um, we're going to see later how we use it though, but you can just try it on a piece of paper and see that it works. Okay, so we want to make use of this formula for each square and we want to discretize the derivatives as well. So this is our derivative, the gradient of phi. Now, the way we're going to use this is we're going to use a formula for what we call um, forward derivative. At least that's what it's called in Hebrew. Um, this is what it looks like. We basically take the cell that came after minus the current cell over the um, length that between the two centers of the squares. That's the x component, and then do the same for y, whatever is on top minus the bottom. Here, actually, we're going to add the cells around so we can see what we're talking about. We need this cell, this minus this, this minus that. All right. Um, let's give those sides around the cell that we are interested in. Let's give them names. Let's call them A, B, C, and D. Now, for A, we're going to look at the element that we're going to sum up in the sigma summation here. For A, for side A, we are going to, first of all, instead of n here, we're going to replace it by y, since that's our unit vector that is perpendicular to the side, um, and times it by delta x, since that's the, as you can see, the length here of the side. Um, and that's what we get. We basically use the formula um, shown up here, sorry, up here. We only need the y component. Now, we are going to use the conductivity of what's here in the middle. So the indices for the conductivity are i, since the middle here is i, but the height is j plus half, not j plus 1, which is the middle here, j plus half. We're going to see later how we actually calculate it. Now, for all sides, these are the equations that we get. Um, so if we put these all nicely like so, we have a summation of all of them. They all equal this, the minus current density times um, dx dy, which is the area, or we can just say minus the current. Um, all right. Now, our next step is substituting um, whatever we wrote before with A, B, C, D, and E, such that it will just kind of reorder our equation and it's going to be easier to solve. We want to make sure that we have something of this form. Um, we have basically uh, phi of this cell. We, we, we basically consider all the cells around our cell in order to do the calculation. Okay. Now, this is where we actually begin with every problem we're going to face. So what we had before is just theory. This is actually where we solve questions. So we're building the phi vector. Um, let's imagine that this is the surface that we're working with, and we made a mesh and stuff, and we have these indices, and we see that the width here is half, let's say half a millimeter, and here the height is the same, whatever, okay. So we are going to use what's called column stacking. So we're going to take each column in here and just put it up here, as you can see, okay? So for every one of these squares, we have a phi value. So this is phi 1, 1, phi 1, 2, blah, 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 phi 1, y, okay. Now we do the same for the next one. As you can see, column stack, and we stack columns on top of each other. All right, so we have a very, very big phi vector. Um, and yeah, let's continue. Okay, now we want to build the matrix, because at the end of the day, this is what we want to solve. We want to solve S 
and the S matrix times phi equals uh, minus I S. So how do we build the conductivity matrix S? We want to make sure that each row here multiplies the phi vector. So let's see. We're going to use what I call a scanner, which is the shape that we saw before of a cross. Now we're going to look here at the, they, basically what's important here is the cell in the middle of the cross. So we're looking at phi one one. So if we want to use the entire equation we see above for uh, phi one one, what we're going to use is first of all, E11, which pertains to the middle cell. We're always going to use that. Um, then we're going to take a look at the sides. We have A, B, C, and E A and D. Um, A is going to be used. We have something in here. We can multiply A by phi 1, 2. We can multiply B by phi 2, 1. Now we don't have anything in the bottom or on the left, so we're not actually going to included at all. So this is the equation for just this one cell and it's going to get all included in this one row of the S matrix. Now we're going to move the scanner up. We're going to basically go by the same pattern that we went through to build the phi vector. We're going to do the same kind of column stacking. We're going to go from bottom to top, bottom to top, as, as seen here. Um, now as you can see, the formula is going to be as such. We're going to take a look not only at top and right, but also at the bottom. So that's why we also have C in here. C looks at the side that is in the bottom, but we don't have D because it's still not included. Okay, and then we continue along. Now I just want to show you the calculation for the first cell. Um, to get AIJ, we had the formulas for the A, B, C, D, E beforehand. Um, this is just to show you how it's practically solved. So later we're going to see how the sigma is calculated, but let's pretend that it's just one, the sigma in the conductivity in here. Um, we times it by dx over dy. Great, we get one here. We also get one and two. Now we have to put it appropriately in the matrix. So let's make sure that minus 2 multiplies F11. We want E11 to multiply F11. So this is the first one here. It's going to multiply this. Then 1, which is, um, let's see, A11 is going to multiply phi12. Okay, great. Then we have zeros, blah, 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 blah. And then we want to multiply this. Okay, so it's going to be later on, and then we have one, great, zeros, blah, 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 awesome. That's basically how we build the entire matrix.